Martin Popoff here from The Contrarians. Welcome back to another edition of Reliving Old Reviews as a Useless Tool of Confusion. I'll leave it to you to figure out where that quote came from. Um, this is uh, about our 12th, 13th episode of this. You can check out all the other ones. We've done some Black Sabbath, some Deep Purple, Montrose, UFO, a whole bunch of Kiss albums. Um, so check those out as well. Um, so yeah, the idea of this show is we read an old review of an album that has become a classic. Um, this time it's a little bit of an obscure classic, but definitely a classic. And seeing what uh, what reviewers can use to compare to these albums that there's not much comparison to kind of thing so today we're going to look at skid row skid on cbs so this is the old skid row this is the gary moore skid row they had a couple albums what's the other one called 36 hours 34 hours something like that uh anyways um so this is a period review uh from 1970 of the skid row album let's see what they have to say and if they get it right um so let me introduce you to an exciting new guitarist his name is gary moore he is only 17 and he plays lead for this three-piece irish band although he shows off on occasions when he uh should have used more restraint and his phrasing and uh let's see one uh, and and his phrasing and tone is at times derivative of better known guitarists, especially Page, who he uh, imitates particularly on uh, unto uh, up show band un Uncle Up Show Band Blues. Uh, he demonstrates enough dexterity, maturity, and invention for me to stick my neck out and say that before he is too much older, he will be making a name for himself. So here we go. Gary Moore, 17 years old, um, a, a comparison to Led Zeppelin. Uh, the big comparison here, well, let's just see if uh, they come up with a comparison here and, and, we'll, and we'll talk a little bit here. Uh, what he lacks at present is experience and discipline, qualities that only time will bring. He is helped along by adequate bass from one Brendan Shields, who wrote most of the songs and sympathetic drumming from Noel Bridgman, who has a controlled heavy technique. Um, now, Brush Shields, uh, yeah, he's a big, important guy in this whole early history of Thin Lizzy and Skid Row. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is a pretty heavy, frantic, uh, I'm just going to scan, you know, no, uh, spoiler alert. Okay. So yeah, so they don't mention uh, this, uh, this coming up. So one of the interesting things about this band is, is over the years, we basically kind of decided that they are a frantic, youthful chaotic version of cream maybe even a more exciting action-packed version of cream that's a pretty interesting album there's a lot going on in this album and yeah what a what a cool what a cool thing that we've got gary moore at 17 years old here right um so as a band they come up with some interesting ideas and swift variations of tempo and rhythms and they have a concise jazzy feel but they are let down to an extent by the material which overall lacks a little in variety and appears to serve basically as a springboard for Moore's solos. The vocals, uh, too, are rather thin and strained. Notwithstanding, the album emerges well on the credit side, and the hand is one of the uh, and the and the band is one of the most interesting uh, to have arrived in some while. So this is a MW for Melody Maker uh, saying this. Uh, they they just do initials here. So uh, so there you go. I I think um, I think the reviewer more or less gets it right. Uh, except there is no cream comparison, which is quite bizarre. Uh, and there's only one real comparison in the entire thing, and that's to uh, comparing Gary Moore to Jimmy Page. So uh, let us know what you think. I'd like to know what you think of this album in general. Skid Row Skid. Um, yeah, it's uh, the this was a this was a pretty interesting band just these two albums cbs um and coming out of ireland kind of thing but this is a this is a band that's uh you know a big part of the lore of the beginning of thin lizzy history by the way um i still have my two thin lizzy books that tell the story of thin lizzy available right that's the um it's now called emerald for the first one and the next one is called the sun goes down i still have copies of thin lizzy the visual biography and our most recent one was a thin lizzy panel book we did honesty is no excuse so you can check all that out at martinpopoff.com uh but yeah let us know what you think of uh of this review if this reviewer got it right skid roast it